Hello everyone, my name is Amin Musa and I'm a security engineer at Silk Fortress. In this capsule, I'm going to show you step by step how you can handle an incident response using the Silk Fortress Seam Stack. Before we start, I have to make a quick disclaimer though. This is just a general guide, real incidents are all different, different malware, different behaviors, different impacts, so in real life, the steps might change or you might need to add or skip some parts depending on the situation. Think of this video just as a clear, simple way to understand the overall process, not a strict rule that fits every case. Imagine this, you get an alert from your seam stack. It says, one of your machine is beaconing to a command and control server. But here is the scary part. You don't know what the alert is, what it's doing, or how long it's been there. So you ask yourself the question, what do I do now? That's exactly what we'll go through today, step by step, from detection to full recovery using the real world incident response methodology. So first things first, what's your very first move when your seam shouts C2 beacon in detected? Do you reboot the machine, pull the plug on the machine, or isolate the machine? If you said isolate the machine, you're already thinking like an incident responder. If you said reboot the machine or pull the plug on the machine, it's fine, I'll show you what to do exactly. So you might ask the question, why isolate the machine and not reboot it? Because the memory is extremely important. That's where the malware is running, hiding, and doing its work. If you reboot, all of that disappears and you lose the most valuable piece of evidence. Instead, we want to isolate the computer from the network. And inside the Sock Fortress stack, we have a built-in quarantine feature that makes it super easy. All you do is pick the agent you want to isolate, go to the quarantine tab, Select the Windows Quarantine Artifact and press Start. That's it. The machine gets isolated automatically, no outbound traffic, no lateral movement, nothing. This keeps the malware from talking to the internet while we investigate. Now that the system is safely isolated, we want to take a quick look at what's happening right now. Let's start with running applications. We want to see every process that's currently active on the infected VM, alongside with the listening ports. Running this command helps us collect all the running processes and listening ports on the machine and it saves everything into a file so we can review it. So, this will give us a quick snapshot of what's happening on the system at this exact moment, which is really useful during an investigation. If we look at the contents of this file, we can see every process running on the endpoint and every open port at the same time we collected the data. Right now, nothing in this list looks obviously malicious from a basic security check, no weird processes names, and no unknown services listening on strange ports. Given the C2 beaconing alert we received, that's actually suspicious in itself. It could mean that the malware is hiding from normal tools. A rootkit can do that, obviously. The process might have opened the network connection earlier and then removed itself from the visible process list. To investigate that properly, we need to analyze the memory itself. We will capture the system's physical memory using magnet ramp capture. This lets us grab a full memory image so we can hunt for hidden processes, injected code, and C2 activity that won't show up in Task Manager or Netstat itself. Memory forensics is essential because advanced malware often lives only in the memory, never touching the disk itself. Using magnet forensics is pretty easy. You just select the path where you want to save the uh, dump file on. For example, let's call this a test. And we hit save. And then you just have to press start and that's it. One of the tools I like using to analyze memory dumps is Volatility3. It's an open source memory forensics framework that lets us extract artifacts directly from the memory dump, like running processes, injected code, network connections, and even hidden malware that doesn't show up in normal system tools. With Volatility3, we can run plugins like, uh, like PSList to see all active processes at the time of the memory capture and start building a clear picture of what was happening on the system behind the scenes. I'm not going to go through on how to use volatility commands in this video, but if you're interested in learning more about volatility 3 and how to analyze memory dumps step by step, let me know. We can drop a full video on it and even create a detailed article to go with it. Running this command will pull the list of processes from the memory image. And sure enough, 
We're seeing things that task list completely missed. For example, there is a keylogger.exe sitting in the memory, running quietly in the background, but never showing up in normal process list. This is exactly why memory forensics is so powerful. If something hides from Windows, it can never hide from a memory dump, actually. Now that we've confirmed the suspicious app is running, let's check where it's beaconing. Now let's run it with the Netstat plugin. Now that we've confirmed the suspicious app is running, let's check where it's beaconing. Now let's run it with the Netstat plugin. And sure enough, Netscan shows keylogger.exe talking to an external host and there is a clear sign it was beaconing to a remote C2. Now that we have the app name, let's pull its full path from the memory image. And sure enough, this is the path of the application that is beaconing to the server. Now that we know exactly where the app lives and which server it's talking to, we can take two immediate steps. One, we block the C2 server at the firewall level. And two, we can quarantine the executable for offline analysis. There are definitely other steps we can take depending on what the app was doing and how much damage it caused. But for this demo, we can keep it simple. Block the C2, isolate the file and preserve the evidence. Since this is a lab demo, we will lift the quarantine on the agent. And immediately block the C2 at the firewall. Open the copilot direction windows firewall IP block. Set the target IP to the C2 server IP and direction to outbound. And that will finally stop the beaconing. And then you press invoke action. Let's quarantine the malicious file. Just open the copilot direction windows file quarantine and in the target path field, specify the full path to the executable. In our case, that's the keylogger application. Copilot would automatically move the file to into a secure quarantine folder, rename it to disable all executions, and log the action for offline analysis. So to wrap it up, we listed all running processes and network ports, then dug deeper with the RAM capture and volatility 3. That's how we uncovered the hidden keylogger.exe, beaconing to a C2 server. For the demo, we blocked the C2 at the firewall and quarantined the file for analysis. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.